Hi guys, welcome back to John O's Bass Fishing. I'm going to talk about skipping jigs today. Uh, skipping docks specifically with a jig. But uh, anyway, uh, first thing I want to talk to you about is my rod and reel. Uh, I use it to 2SV. This is an 8 to 1 gear ratio. I got it on a Daiwa Kage 7 1 rod. This is a medium, this is a heavy fast action 7 1 rod. And uh, just depending on your height, you may want to go to a little longer rod or a little shorter rod. Um, I usually, or I used to skip with a 7.2 rod and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I wouldn't mind going up to a 7.3. When you get into your, your backhanded cast or your uh, pitch flip cast to skip, then uh, it may help you to have a little longer rod. But I use 15 pound test fluoro. This is Cigar Red Label I use. and. Uh, you could go heavier. I wouldn't go any lighter than that because um, you are going to be playing some fish out of brush and pylons and stuff like that. So I tend to stick with 15 pound test. You could go heavier, but your reel is just probably not going to perform as well with heavier line, in my opinion, especially throwing a, a 3 h jig. But uh, let's move on to the, the jig I use, which is uh, I typically use a 3 8 football head jig to skip docks on the coastal river anyway when i get up to gunners or somewhere with more grass I, I might throw more of a flipping style jig but uh this is the the net bait pocket bug 3 8 football head jig here it is you can see it a little bit and uh what i look for in a jig that i'm gonna skip docks with is uh one i want a, a lighter wire hook just with a little bit of flex in it and that's just to help me play the fish out from under the dock or uh, play them through brush. I'm using 15 pound test. I'm not going to be just powering them in. I'm going to try to play them out. So the hook gives me a little more flex, keeps them on the hook a little bit better, makes a smaller hole in his mouth, all those things. Uh, second thing I look for, one of the bigger things I look for in a skipping jig is I want a nice lead bait keeper. And uh, because when I have that trailer on there, I don't want the trailer to move. And uh, I want, of course you want to stay on good. You're gonna be hitting docks and hitting the water and it's gonna pull it down over and over again. So first thing I do when I take this jig out of the box for, for skipping is uh, I'm gonna cut it down right to the end of the hook. So, and I don't mind leaving a few little longer strands Second thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, pull the skirt in the back of it off to the side a little bit. Make kind of part it down the middle. And that's gonna make me a little skipping platform for my trailer. And uh, to me, one of, the, one of the most important things about skipping a jig is your trailer because you're making a platform to skip. So you don't want something with a lot of appendages or a lot of stuff hanging out. Let me grab my trailers and I'll show you. So, one of my favorite trailers to skip with is a speed crawl. And uh, there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of good options out there. I like the, the Rage Menace. I like the, uh, the Rage Crawl, the reaction innovation beaver all that stuff will work you just basically want something with not a whole lot of appendages and uh and a fairly smooth surface so i'll just run that up the hook and try to get this as straight as possible put it on there and push it down on that lead keeper to hold it on and uh as you can see when you part this skirt in the middle behind it, you just, you just have a little less skirt right here on that platform than what you have on the rest of the jig. So it just, it just creates almost like a boat section for it to slide across the water. So moving on, let's get into the mechanics of skipping the jig and uh, and how to cast and how you're gonna go about that. So real quick, before we dive into the mechanics of uh, skipping, a quick tip for you is uh, if you're brand new at skipping and you're scared of blowing up your reel, 
go ahead and make you a good long cast with it and take you some scotch tape and just put it down uh, on your line and reel it in over it. And what that'll do is it will, if you do bird nest it, it'll keep it from going all the way down in your spool and making you have to replace all your line. So, uh, moving into the actual mechanics of skipping. Uh, first thing, you want to have a backhanded cast for if you're approaching the docks uh, from on your left side so you can get under them that way and then you want to have your roll cast where you can get under them approaching them from the right side where you roll cast under so I like to keep my reel fairly loose um, as you can see I don't know how well y'all can see it but my jig falls pretty quick you gotta use a lot of thumb and uh, you want to have basically depending on the length of your rod and, and how tall you are you want to have a little more slack than if you were to just cast regular because when you do this roll cast how far your rod tip is from the water is about where you want the jig to be so if I'm going to roll cast from up here, then I'll probably want my jig out here so that it's coming close to the water when I'm in the bottom part of my roll cast. Because when you release this jig and it starts heading towards the dock, you want it to be parallel with the water so that it makes when it makes contact with the water, it's already parallel to it. So it's got more chance of actually hitting the water and skipping instead of just tanking and rolling over and blowing up your reel so I like to stand up and uh, I mean most of the time I just go off a of feel but I like to stand up and just I leave about this much slack in my line and just when you're starting out you just want to make nice gentle soft cast and just not do that and just lightly get used to casting where your lure is parallel to the water. Now, a, lot, a lot of people when they're first learning one of the biggest mistakes I see they make is they try to cast it so hard um, right off the bat to account for that friction that they're gonna have when they cast but I mean if you just think of casting to the back of the dock you really don't have to cast it that hard so you only have to cast it a little bit harder to account for the friction that you're going to have with your jig actually skipping. So, you know, start slow and just just practice. Apparently, I'm not going to be able to skip on camera right now. But so when you cast a jig, when it hits its full speed, you want it to already be parallel to the water, which would be if the docks right here in front of me would be right at the tip of the dock. If the docks up there, you know, you'd have to cast a little harder and. Uh, at its farthest, right before it hits the dock, you want it paralleling. Uh, when you do your backhand cast, and you can, I've seen people do it a lot of different ways. Some people will actually do a, a backwards roll cast. Uh, some people will kind of do a complete sideways cast, almost like a left-handed baseball swing. And uh, a lot of people do the, the pitch skip, and that's, that's what I do. So I, I put a lot more slack in my line to my jig when I do it this way. And um, same principle. When you release this, you want the jig as close to the water as possible, parallel, already moving at that parallel to the water um, angle. And uh, when you release it. You want to actually, uh, or I personally, pick up my rod tip a little bit to t move this line out of the way so that it's just a jig skipping under the dock. So, so you want to roll cast with your forearm. You want a, some kind of cast 
with your back can so you can approach the dock from both ways and the rest of it's just getting out there and practicing you know if uh if your jig keeps tanking and you feel like you're making a good cast keep checking check your trailers check your skirt you might want to trim that skirt a little more in the back to uh create a smoother platform to skip on but that's pretty much all i got hopefully this video has helped you out and uh I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification bell so you get notified about my future videos. And until next time, I'm Jonathan Harris. Thanks for watching.